you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everyone wants to log into their letterbox account and then rank the most prestigious, obscure, cinema verite, French new wave movies as their like number one thing because it's gonna make them feel important and smart and intellectual. But I don't care about any of that. I wanna know what movies speak to your soul. So right now, leave a comment, your top three movies of all time, your favorite ones, the one that speak to you closely and personally, and explain why. I'll go first and I'll give my top 10 favorite movies of all time to my personal taste. Number 10, The Disaster Artist. I made a video about my love of really bad movies and that included The Room, which is the production that this movie, The Disaster Artist, is based off of. Um, you can watch it over here if you want to see more of that. This movie captures the desperate attempt at communicating something profound and failing miserably. But when you really look at the movie and you really take it in, it is very funny, but this weird tragedy of a movie is really a triumph. The director and star, James Franco, he says this very well and I love it. This terrible movie, the reason why it's so rewatchable is because it has such a soul to it. To me, failing at making something, yet it retains a soul to it, the soul of the artist, is so much more valuable than making something that appeals to people but is just generic. It's the flavor of the month. It's a trope. It's a trend. It's nothing special and will be forgotten over time. I've been told that my most admirable trait is how unapologetic I am in my pursuits, which was the nicest compliment anyone has given me. And this movie reminds me about that. It reminds me about how amazing and adventurous life can be when you are unapologetically you as an artist. Even if you're a terrible artist, it is still worth its while. Number nine, Jurassic Park. This is just cluster blockbuster filmmaking all packaged in one. It's awe-inspiring, it sparks the imagination, you just really enter a world of magic and wonder, but in a way that isn't like cheesy Disney and whatever, but you're, you're enthralled in this adventure. It really just makes you feel like a kid again. The central idea is still applicable and the theme is very weighty yet appeals to a large audience. Normally, if something just appeals to a large audience, like 90% chance, I know I'm not gonna like it, but I do give it a try. You know, Stranger Things was one of those things where I thought it was gonna be bad and then I, was hired to work on season four, and I was like, well, let me watch this show. And then I watched it during my lunch breaks, and I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Uh, and I became a big fan of the show. And to me, Jurassic Park is that. It's a classic blockbuster. It has the mass appeal, and it's just a really great time. Maybe it's my nostalgia talking, but it's just one of my favorites. It deserves number nine in my list. Number eight is Interstellar. It's a masterful use of the camera and the edit. Regardless of you think of its script, the moments in this movie are just so striking. Cooper leaving Murph, you know, the, the Tesseract scene, he said, don't leave it, don't, don't leave it, ah, ah, the messages scene. I mean, my favorite was the moment where Cooper leaves the Tesseract. He leaves Gargantua, the black hole, and he's rescued, and he's, he's in Cooper Station, and he's walking into the room to see his daughter after so long after decades and decades her entire life he missed her entire life and she's this old woman now surrounded by her family and we see the we hear the organ coming in Hans Zimmer's a fucking genius we hear the organ coming in and the door to the hospital room opens and then we see the backs of her family members slowly turning their attention towards us as we're in the perspective of Cooper walking in and then we can't see through them until finally there's an opening in the in the gathering of people around the bed. And we finally see Murph, this old lady, smiling. And then you cut to Cooper and it's this like, ah, oh, it's just really, it is a scene that never fails to choke me up or make me cry. It's, 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 I just love when movies have amazing moments that stick with you long after the credits have rolled. To me, Interstellar had so many of those moments and it's just always stuck with me since and I make it uh, a, a, an occasion to watch that movie, you know, here and there, whenever I get the chance, um, I try to rewatch it again because it's so, it's such an amazing experience. Number seven, Into the Spider-Verse. 
This stylistic and far out animated movie is so much more than your standard animated picture and way more than your standard Sony animated picture. The relationship between Miles and his dad, Jefferson, is what makes this whole movie for me. They start off very misaligned. Jefferson has these high expectations for him, wanting more for his son, Miles. And Miles wants to find his own path and just needs the space to, to discover that and to, to navigate his life as, as a teenager in Brooklyn. Now, through certain events in the story and toward the end, these two characters finally find some kind of common ground, a bridge that gaps the distance between the two where they can actually communicate and understand one another and start to build a positive relationship with one another. Now, this movie came out in the time of my life where something like that was happening in my own life. A feeling of being understood for the first time by my own dad and being seen as capable of figuring my own future out, of being capable of finding my own way. Wow, my mission is done. You're on your own. Yeah. Well, just, to, just to be acknowledged in that sense was such a powerful feeling and to see it represented in a picture like Spider-Verse really captured it um, perfectly and it really moved me. And all of that comes together perfectly in the leap of faith scene um, and the quote that you hear Jefferson telling Miles from earlier on in the movie that Miles remembers in his head as he is taking that leap of faith. Now see this, this spark in you, it's, it's amazing. Whatever you choose to do with it, you'll be great. Like, what's up, danger? It's having like, someone else's up, confidence in your capabilities, especially when you've been doubting yourself the entire time. There's a real strength that that gives you when someone says, I believe in you. They're excited to see how you bloom and blossom. That is such a powerful thing to hear. And this movie just came out at the perfect time and alignment as I was experiencing that in my own life in a very big way. And so it's always just had a very special place for me in my heart and soul. It's just such a personal reason why it's in my top 10, but it's there and I love the movie and it's fantastic also. Um, a little bit quirky and goofy at times, but that's kind of the whole point of it. It, you know, again, you have this like quirky, goofy comedy to really contrast these uh, ideas that are that are heavier. I love that movie so much. Number six, Tick Tick Boom. This is a must see for any artist out there of any discipline. If you're a screenwriter, if you're a playwright, if you're an author, if you're a painter, if you're a musician, if whatever the hell you do, in the creative world, you need to watch this movie. This film deals with the crushing weight of living in a permanent obscurity, hoping and hoping one day that something that you make sticks to the wall that breaks you out of this monotony that you've been living your entire life, but never really being sure that it'll ever happen for you. Fear or love is a central idea and a central theme in this movie, and it's something that I think about a lot ever since I've watched it. Will I pursue my ambitions from a place of fear? Will I act out of a means of trying to get out of this obscurity and being discovered, being known, finding success? Will I allow myself to drown in despair all along the way in pursuit of this ambition because I'm so fearful of it not working out? Or will I act and create out of a love of the act of creating, out of the desire to share and express the ideas that made me want to become an artist in the first place? And I think it's a pretty good strategy to act and create and to move in life from a place of giving. And that's something that I still try to apply today. I mean, it's not something that you just hear and say, oh, let me do it. But it is something that when you consider it often, you start to find ways to apply it more. You catch yourself acting out of fear. And it's a nice reminder to think, I need to approach this from a place of love. Now, normally I don't like Broadway style music. It just doesn't ring right in my ears, but Andrew Garfield's performance of acting and singing is just so amazing. The central ideas that are at play are just so resonant with me that I really don't mind when they break out into musical. I do kind of like, oh, well, here they go. Here's when they're gonna sing and dance. And it's like weird and awkward. It's never been organic to me those kind of like breaking out into song and dance thing, but I really do enjoy this movie a lot. And some of the songs, when they do break out into song, are really emotional and intense, and they really, like, like it really, like, puts a frog in your throat. You're, like, choking up and, and, and sort of tearing up a little bit. I mean, I love 
the 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 is this real life song and that scene in particular it's just so powerful and man is it so well done this one really kept me glued onto the screen and left me with something extremely powerful after the fact i've watched it maybe three times already and it's just an amazing amazing movie i recommend any artist to watch it anyone in general but artists especially i want it to stop i want it all to stop number five joker i am a sucker for tone and setting in movies tv shows books any kind of story if you have a feeling and the world around you is really dreary or cruel or interesting uh, unique something about it just gets me i don't know what it is but you could have the any kind of a script in the world and if your tone and setting are amazing i am hooked i am the biggest fan it is the greatest piece of art i've ever seen in my life you start out watching the movie and you just can't help but feel for arthur living this quiet life of desperation you know in a world of crushing judgment in the face of tragedy it's a cruel world it can seem like we live in a dog eat dog world and this movie captures that feeling amazingly we have struggled so deeply in our lives at some point or another and we just wish someone would actually care to lend a helping hand even a kind gesture joker captures the feeling of being in a cynical place about the world so 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 well obviously as the movie progresses this is a villain we're talking about here it's not like he's the hero of the story we only like him to a certain point and then it's unforgivable he's the villain you know he doesn't deserve redemption but it is fun and it is entertaining and it is fascinating to watch these difficult crushing circumstances pan out in a way that is tragic ultimately i love tragedies i love tragic uh, stories a lot um you know because you can explore and revel these dangerous places without actually having to go there and it's a lot of fun <laughs> this feeling of dread that drags out in the entire movie is just i love it so much i love it joaquin phoenix did an amazing job i love the way that todd phillips approached the directing lauren sure and his cinematography was amazing i love the visuals of this movie as well everything about the movie from the visual motifs to the tone and feeling the music hilder's score is my favorite it's absolutely incredible i love that movie so much um i moved to new york city uh around the time that it was being promoted and released. And so I watched it in the biggest like laser IMAX projection in this huge IMAX theater in Lincoln Square that's like four or five stories tall. It's just a huge screen. I think it's the biggest screen that I've ever seen a movie in. And I watched, Joker was the first movie that I watched in a full on multi-story IMAX screen. It was the biggest movie I've ever seen and it was absolutely stunning and amazing. Number four, everything, everywhere, all at once. This is a fucking crazy movie uh, we're talking about here. It's a relatively new movie. It came out like a, year, a couple years ago, I forget at this point. And it's one of those movies that you can't really explain to someone. You say, well, what's it about? It's like, well, it's like a multiverse movie. and But it's not like Doctor Strange or like Marvel or anything. It's like really smart. But then it's like, there's a lot of really weird, quirky things, but it's not like a quirky, weird, stupid movie either. It's just like really heartfelt thing, but it's also funny, but it's also engaging in action. There's just no way to quite point your finger at it. And you can't, and then you say all that, but it's like the most moving movie you've ever seen. And it's like, what does that mean? And you just have to watch it. You have to see it for yourself and witness. You have to bear witness to the movie in order to really get uh, much from it. And there was a commentary, I forget who said it, but there's a commentary I saw about that movie, which I, really agree with and I love. And it was that the movie starts out so mind numbing and mind bendingly complicated and ends so simply. Through bearing witness to every possibility, you realize just how special and just how beautiful the world that you live in really is. Um, warts and all, it's quite the ride. And I, I can't say more than that. It's, it's a really moving story um, about leaning into your family and leaning into the people in your life in times when you feel there's nothing around you. you. You have people and you just have to 
find the strength to to connect and 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 i love the movie it's it's man Number three, The Pursuit of Happiness. Will Smith in this movie is my favorite. I love him. This is my favorite thing he's ever done, ever in the history of time. I watched this movie, uh, God, so so long ago. Um, I remember I was a teenager, and you know, I was getting into this idea of like, well, how do I make my art into my my living? Like, how do I make a living out of my art? Maybe I'll make a business and I'll do something. And I got into that whole world of like business and da 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 and like learning marketing and blues, like all that you know fun stuff <laughs> when you're up against a wall and you have no options except to push your way through and even then it's an impossibility it's such an incredibly difficult thing to go through and to watch um but with enough effort and sacrifice and the willingness to get up after you've been kicked down and stomped on, eventually things can go right and eventually things can happen in favor of you. Man, that movie just, it used to be my number one movie uh, for the longest time. But as I've grown up, as I've matured, other movies, other stories have applied more specifically to my life and have spoken to me at a deeper level than that movie. And so it's bumped its way down to my top three, but it's still on my top three. I love that movie to death, and I always will. That dinosaur scene, that that that, that time travel scene, oh man. Right here. Wait a minute, where do you wanna go? Uh, I don't know, some place from before. Oh my goodness. What? Open, open, open. Oh. What is it? Dinosaurs. Where? You don't see all these dinosaurs? Look around. We need a cave. A cave? We gotta find a cave. Come on. Come on. Come on. That scene will never not get me. Number two, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. This movie explores a character who tends to live in fantasy or delusion. You desperately want to be able to get yourself out of this fear mode, living out of, maybe not fear, but out of hesitance. You know, he, we, we start off in the movie and we see him with like seeing this this woman's profile on eHarmony. He wants to give her a wink and he's like building up the courage for it. And that's sort of how we start off and then we realize that uh, she's one of the new people that started working at Life, the magazine that he works for. There's this feeling of being frozen. There's a there's a there's a hesitancy to break out of the mold and to to pursue a risk in hopes of adventure of some kind, of any kind. Through the events of the story, he's put on this grand adventure. He's meant to take these great risks and he does it and he's pushed all the way to the edge and 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 I love the movie so much. There was a review about the movie, an article about it that was something I don't I, I I'm gonna paraphrase it, but it, it it was basically saying don't try to be like Walter Mitty. They're just letting everybody go. He doesn't have a job anymore. That's like how the movie ends, and he's writing all his adventures and all his things in his new resume, and he's just gonna be looking for a new job and he's gonna be back into his routine. That's 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 what the article said. And it was how you want to like live a life of adventure and all that. Like you have to live like Sean O'Connell, you know? And it's like, that perspective is valid and it's awesome. But I don't think that was the point of the movie. You want to live a life of adventure, spend all your money and go on this trip and this adventure and then come back home and you'll, I think the real point of it was you have to take a really big risk and make a really big change to break out of a static way of living. He was never unhappy, Walter Mitty, in his office job. He never disliked his job as a ne negative asset solution. He worked with great people. He liked his job. He was good at it. And, um, you know, he daydreamed and all that. But, you know, he wasn't like, he, he wasn't craving this life of adventure and adrenaline and risk. He craved a life where he was brave enough to ask the girl out who started working at the office a few weeks ago. And sometimes when you're that kind of person, when you don't have the bravery to do those little things that can change your life forever, 
Sometimes it takes a big commitment. Sometimes it takes a big thing, a big adventure, a big risk to jolt you out of this stagnant mode so you can finally learn to take those smaller risks that will move your life in the way that you want. And so, yeah, I think I think this is a movie really about gaining courage um, and seeking out the things you want in your life. I don't think it's a movie that calls everyone to go on this grand adventure, but rather it's a movie that calls the audience to be a little bit more brave in their lives, to take a little risk and, you know, see what's on the other side of that risk. Um, by no means does that mean jumping out of a helicopter with a drunk pilot and radio parts into a freezing arctic ocean and being attacked by sharks and you know uh, skateboarding away uh, from a burning volcano and whatever maybe it's something as simple as asking that girl out and that whether it goes in your favor just prepares you for so much more of risk taking and adventure seeking in your own life and allows you to open up your life to change, open your life to greater and greater things. Number one is, <coughs> my number one favorite movie of all time is The Truman Show, starring Jim Carrey. I love this movie. Truman, who was adopted from birth, by a television corporation and they built a seaside town with all these extras and actors and they have hidden cameras everywhere and they broadcast them 24 7 365 days to the whole world as a reality show um, documentary in a sense about his life he doesn't know that he's in it he just thinks he's living a normal life we start to see the break in the routine he's starting to notice things are off a little bit and trying to discover the reality of his world while the producers and directors and all the studio people are trying to keep that reality hidden from him. Sometimes it feels like the world is conspiring against you and in order to break out of that mold, in order to break out of the routine that you want to know, you want to know the world a little bit more, you want to get out of this, this, this rut, sometimes it takes a desperate fight in order to break out and it feels that way. It feels like you are being controlled, like your life is a show that other people are producing and puppeteering. Sometimes it takes the most courage, the most bravery, and facing your biggest fears to get onto the other side of discovery. Like when, when Truman is, is having moments where he's talking to his supposed best friend uh, about his problems and how he wants to leave and go to Fiji and find this girl, and in the earpiece of the actor, you can see you see the scene of the director directing that scene where he's like, all right, I want you to say this. Da, 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 da. And then he goes, all right, go to the crane shot. Go to the, go to the car shot. Da, da, da. Hold the wide when he reunites with his dad and whatever. And it's just like, all right, and music. And then it's just like, you're seeing him direct this scene and you're moved. You can't help but feel like crying almost by this fabricated thing. It's, it's a beautiful scene, but it's all fabricated and we know it, yet we can't help but feel the emotion of the fabricated scene. And I just love that. And there were a number of cases where the director of the show is doing that and I just absolutely love those scenes so much, and especially because I like directing and making films. It, it, it's, it's fun to kind of see that um, alive directing and then being moved by it uh, in, in a scene, even though you know it's false, even though you know the entire thing is, it's done so in a very wretched way, and yet you're still moved by it. I love those scenes so much. And of course, the way that it ends, uh, there's a scene, I think those scene is called At World's End, uh, I love that scene so much. He's banging at the wall, banging at the wall, and he's crying, and he's like, just like, I'm so close, but I'm so far. And you can't hear anything. You just hear the music, this beautiful, almost triumphant sounding music, but with the image, it's so tragic, and it's, it does not fail to make me cry every single time. There are obviously little quirks and things in the movie that are just like remnants of filmmaking history that aren't really common or that interesting anymore. Um, obviously, it's a relatively old movie. I say relatively. But it is just a masterclass of premise, story, directing. Which every time that I watch it, I always realize when you're in a place where you feel really stuck 
in a way where the world is puppeteering and controlling you sometimes it feels that way it really takes a strong and dedicated fight to escape that monotony and find this new world that you've been looking for but in order to get there you first need to fight and you first need to wander you first need to face your biggest fears and on the other side of your biggest fears are the greatest things and the greatest adventure and the greatest freedom that you could ever have. So those are my top 10 movies of all time. My personal favorites. I don't think that they're the best movies in the world. They're just the ones that speak to me the most. I'm sure there are many, many more movies that I haven't seen yet that are objectively better. I'm sure that the movies you listed in the comments, those three movies that you said are your favorites, comment them below if you haven't already. I do it. Do it. Do you do it? Oh, you're doing it now. I'm sure some of those movies are going to be even better than my favorite movies, but these really spoke to me and have stuck with me over the years, and I absolutely do not apologize for my favorite movies. I just created a Letterboxd account uh, as well. This is kind of like a, hey, I made a Letterboxd. Um, I, I, I want to start like posting every time I make a movie, like do little reviews and stuff like that, and just kind of talk a little bit about movies. So if you're a movie fan and you like what I have to say about my opinion and my take and experience with a movie and the material, uh, give me a follow on Letterboxd as well. Uh, I think it'll be really fun, you know, to chat with some people about movie making and less about this movie is the best thing ever. It's objectively this, but really how these movies speak to us on a personal level. Movies can really unlock a new perspective on something that you've been thinking about for a long time. They can really unlock a new avenue, uh, a, new, a new opinion, a new way of thinking of a problem that's been in your life. Um, or at least give you some comfort in knowing that you aren't alone in a feeling. I think movies are really, really powerful tools. I've grew up in and out of hospitals and watching movies, I've always felt through watching movies, especially in my darkest times, that the, tr that the tragedy of being can be triumphed over with effort and courage and risk and confronting one's fears and stories in general, not just movies, but television shows, novels, plays, music. Um, they teach us these things, or maybe they don't teach us these things, but uh, uh, rather they remind us that the courage we need to overcome life's biggest struggles have lied within us and our entire human race since the dawn of time, and it's been lying there dormant. And sometimes with great stories, we just need a reminder to let that part of ourselves out every once in a while. With that being said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this. Uh, there's more videos like this on my channel. Go ahead and check it out, and uh, that'll be all. I'll see you in the next video.